Hey, what is going on guys? This is Eli from Mobox and this time we are going to create this flat looking cave effect. I came up with this idea by looking at the illustration of Andrei Prokopenko. Obviously you can see this is made in something like Photoshop or Illustrator, but I thought maybe we can do this in 3D. So that is exactly what we will be doing. Let's get started in Cinema 4D by adding a landscape object. And the first thing we are already going to do is enabling the spherical option down here. So this way we have a big fat blob of landscape. Let's also increase the width segments to 200, so it's a bit more defined. Uh, we have a bit more detail this way. And of course this is not a cave just yet. So let's add a bent deformer and make it the child of the landscape. When it is the child of the landscape we can click this fit to parent option. That will make the bounding box just the size of the landscape. If you can't see it like me, you can go to the filter options and enable the deformer filter. So you can see it's the right size. So let's go inside of the options of the band deformer and increase the strength so we can wrap this around itself. This gives us some kind of base shape of a cave. Let's also hide the deformer by double clicking this top dot so it's not obstructing the vision. And now we want multiple ones of these. So this is just too short for a cave of course. So that's why we need multiple ones. I need to say that there is no right or wrong way to do this. Uh, you can make any kind of cave you want. But why I prefer this method is because we have separate parts of the landscape. So if we make a duplicate of the landscape, we have this gap in between, which will also make it easier to have lighting going in between there. So we have nice hits on every edge inside of the cave, which would not be possible if we had a cave that is enclosed from the start to the end. Okay, so I have two landscapes. Let's create three more. So we have five landscapes in total. We are doing this for variation's sake. And of course, to give this a bit more randomness, we can go inside of the landscapes separately and just change the seed value. Of course, you need to make sure the seed value is different on every one of them. One more thing to make it even more random is going inside of the landscapes bend object on some of these and just increasing the angle with a few degrees. So it gives it a bit more of an angle, like it says, of course. So this will do for now. Now, if you look through this, you can see it kind of looks like a cave already. What I found to be the easiest way to get some even spacing in between the landscapes is adding them inside of a cloner object. So let's create a cloner object and drag these inside of it. And first of all, we need to make sure the count is set to five. So we have all five of them appearing inside of the cloner. And of course, we don't need them to go up every step but we want them to go into the distance, so the Z value. And let's go with something like 1700 centimeters maybe. Okay, yeah, that will do. Now what you could see is that it is very rough at some parts, so we can smooth it out by adding a subdivision surface. If the cloner is still selected, you can just hold Alt or Option and click the subdivision surface, so it's a parent of the cloner. So that looks a bit smoother already. Now one more thing we can do is adding something at the back here, because it's just an empty void right now. You can pick anything you like, but what I did is adding just another landscape behind here. And scale it up a bit of course. So we have a bit of a profile in the back. And what I also did is having a placeholder for something that represents the sun or the moon, anything you like. Like this. We can adjust this later, because it's also kind of angle dependent, if you can see it or not. But now, uh, one more thing I would like to add, one detail, is some kind of cone. And we're going to add a displacer deformer to this, so make it a child of it. And in here at the shading tab, we can create a noise shader. And we can just keep the default settings for now. But we also want this cone to be a bit longer. But you can see the shapes are kind of stretched and that is because we don't have too many height segments. So let's increase this. And that way we get a bit more of a defined shape. It's a bit low poly, you can see. Uh, but it won't matter that much because we will have the special lighting anyway. So let's rotate this and place it somewhere in the cave. Okay, so you can add multiple ones of these, uh, maybe in the different distances. That's up to you. But now let's dive straight into the lighting part. So first of all, we need some kind of depth to this, which we can create with the environment object. In here, you don't need to worry about the environment color or the strength. We only need to focus on the fog, so enable that. And you can already tell we have some depth on this. 
You can pick any color you like, but I'm going with the blue color. So that gives us the blue environment and the blue look, but the objects are still gray, so it doesn't look that good just yet. Now another important value here is the distance. By default with this cloner and the same sizes as we just made it, the 10,000 centimeters is just fine. But depending on what you made, you may need to increase this or decrease this. So you can just scrub through the values and see how it looks. But I will go with the defaults for now. Also, if you would render this, you can notice that at the back we cannot see the landscape and the sphere we added. So let's make sure we disable the effect background. And if we render again, you will see we have the outlines of it because the background is black now. So that's good. We will replace the black with something else in just a moment. So now we need some kind of material for this gray blobs because it's not that nice looking right now. So let's go and create that new material. And we're going to disable the color channel straight away. We only need to focus on the reflectance channel. So in here, a first thing we can already do is changing the color. So because the environment is blue, we can just stay monochromatic and use another blue value here, but a bit brighter. If you want to use another color, you can try and experiment with anything you like, of course. Now, this is very soft on the specular, so let's change the values here. We can already reduce the width of this to something like 35%. The falloff is also too big, so let's decrease this to minus 55% for example. But now it's totally gone, so we can counter that with the inner width. Let's increase this all the way to 100%, so we have a very sharp outlined reflection. But it is still very soft, it's not the same color as we selected, so we need to increase the specular strength as well. So that is all there is to it. Let's drag this on the subdivision surface, which holds the cloners, also on the landscape in the back and the cone. The sphere will have a different material in a moment. But now you can see we have something funky or painty looking. It's not exactly the effect we wanted. And that is because we still have the default lighting in this, so we need some kind of custom lighting. So let's go and create an Omni Light, so that's the default one. And we're going to place this all the way at the back. Let's also try to center it up a bit more, so it can watch through the whole cave. And we're going to increase the intensity all the way to 800% or something close to that. Just a very large number. So you can see we have a very blown out look at this side. But at the front we have this nice reflective hit at the edges. Now one more thing we need to do is disabling the diffuse and the GI illumination options on this. Because otherwise it will also light the scene and 800% intensity of light is way too bright for us. So now we only have the specular hit on these edges. Let's duplicate this Omni Light all the way to the front of the cave. But for this one, we are going to decrease the intensity to just 80%, so it's not as blown out. And we are going to invert the look, so disable the specular channel and enable the diffuse and GI illumination. So we have a bit of brightness. So if we disable it, you could notice a slight difference in detail. But enabling it will give us a bit of details back at the front. Okay, so this is already interesting looking, but we only have these very small hits at the edges. So I want a bit more detail. We can do that with an infinite light, and that is why it's so important that we have these gaps in between the landscapes or the cave parts. So with this infinite light, we can rotate this, but I have a specific value which worked nice for me. So on the p-value down here, we can go at minus 150 degrees. So that means it is pointing downwards and towards this. So in here for the intensity we can just leave this as it is. Now let's create a second copy of this. And we're going to rotate this at minus 105 degrees. Also make sure to decrease the intensity of this one to something like 14 or 15%. You can already see we have a nice lighting going on, it's very dynamic. Unlike anything in Illustrator or Photoshop. So that's exactly the goal I had. So let's render and see how this looks. Okay, I like it so far. We need something that fills up the black void at the back. So let's create a background object and we're going to create a material for this, which will just be a luminous material. And you can use any color you like, of course, but I will just go with the blue theme again. It can be a very soft color, so it's a bit more distant because you need to calculate in the fog effect. Now let's drag this on the background. And I want one more material for the sphere at the back. So let's also enable the luminance channel on this. And we're just going with another soft blue color. 
but this time we are going to increase the brightness of this to something like 300%. Let's also enable the glow effect, so we have a glow around it. And in here we are not going to use the default material color. We want something blue again, but a bit darker this time. So it's not too bright, because otherwise the glow effect is way too strong and out of proportion. Let's also decrease the brightness of this. All the rest should be fine, except for the radius, which can be a bit bigger. And that should do. So let's drag that on the sphere we had. And let's render to see how this looks already. Okay, so that is nice. Maybe the background is a bit too bright. So let's change this luminous material to a bit of a fuller color, like this. One more thing I would like to do is adding a camera to this. So we can make a zoomed in camera. So a hundred millimeter, for example. And you can already see how we can animate this and have the dynamic look, which is not possible with Illustrator. One more thing you could also notice is that I had this figure at the front. So if you go in your content browser, you can search for man. And in here you have many types of people you can add in your scene. Or you can also download anything, of course. Just make sure to replace the materials with the one we had just created. So the one which is being applied to the cave. Now one last thing you can do to make it even better looking is going in the render settings and adding a glow effect. Just keep it at the default settings and render again. And just wait until it is finished rendering. And you can see this is giving us this nice glow which makes it just a bit more interesting. So that is all there is to creating this effect. It's nice to play around with the values and the colors to get different kind of looks. It is totally up to you. Of course, as always, you can download my version on the Patreon page. But we're also looking forward to seeing what you created if you send it over to us on Instagram or Twitter. So anyway, I hope you learned something new today and I will see you in the next video.